All right, so up next um, is John Quarterman. Now, when I, we started looking into the Sable Trail Pipeline uh, at Rethink Energy Florida, the very first name that came up was John Quarterman. He's been fighting this for a very long time. He's with the Suwannee Riverkeeper, um, and he's going to give us an overview of the Southeast Market Pipelines project. Yes. Um, I brought a visual aid over there. Hi. Uh, so what is the Southeast Market's Pipeline project? It's a pipeline boondoggle. What do you think it is? Okay, it's three pieces, which I think you heard Shannon already talk about, which is an expansion of the Transco pipeline across Alabama. That thing actually is sucking the gas from the Marcellus Shale up in Pennsylvania all the way down to Alabama and farther. It's being expanded, so the second piece, Sable Trail, which is building now from Alexander City all the way through Georgia down to, out to Orlando, can get that gas, and then from Orlando, there's far to southeast connection that goes down to Shannon's Fort Grand Creek and keeps going. It doesn't stop there. And that ain't all. They'd have you believe that's all there is to it. But there's a term called segmentation, which is supposed to be illegal, which is to take pieces of the project and permit them separately, pretending, that, pretending they're not related. Right where this pipeline chain goes in Florida, there are half a dozen already permitted liquid natural gas export operations permitted by a different agency. One of them permitted before Sable Trail ever went into the FERC process. <coughs> and that ain't all. At least two of these have permission to send this liquid natural gas on containers by truck, by rail, as far as Jacksonville and Miami. That's right, bomb trains, bomb trucks through your cities. So, if you hear pipeline companies trying to claim, we've got to have pipelines or we'll have to ship it by rail or truck, they're lying. This pipeline promotes more shipping by rail and truck and ship overseas. Why overseas? Prices are five times higher. Now, Sable Trail will claim, this is not for export, it's all for Florida. But I can point you at an industry publication two years ago that spells out that starting with Atlantic Sunrise, another project by the same company that owns Transco, Atlantic Sunrise in Pennsylvania is to get Marcellus Shale gas, put it through Transco, send it to Cove Point LNG Export in Maryland, and to Elba Island LNG Export in Georgia and Sable Trail. Coincidence? And they also spelled out in there to go as far as Miami. Wait a minute, far to Southeast Connection doesn't go to Miami. But those bomb trucks and drains do. It's always been in the plan. It was segmented. They're trying to pull the wool over everybody's eyes. So, boo. 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 Okay, so what should we be doing? Well, thank you, Kim. I think you spelled that out. Solar power for Florida. It's here right now. That's what we need to be doing. Now, FPL back in 2013 in Florida, everybody knows what FPL is, right? Okay, so in 2013, FPL claimed we need Sable Trail because Florida needed 13% more electricity in the next decade. Now, I don't know how that ever added up because that's a third pipeline of that size. That's 50% more. Wait a minute, somebody help me with that arithmetic. They also claimed it's because FPL needs to, quote, modernize some coal plants to turn them to natural gas. Well, Eric Szilagyi, the president of FPL, let the cat out of the bag about that about a year ago when somebody asked him, what percentage of Florida power comes from coal anyway? 3.9%. Somebody help me with the arithmetic again. So in FPL's 2016 10-year plan, they have to submit to the Public Service Commission, that one says, oh, wait a minute, Florida doesn't need any new electricity until 2024 at the earliest. And those coal plants we're going to modernize? Oh, we already did that. Yeah, yeah. So, why are they still building this thing? Could it be corporate, it, John? corporate greed? <laughs> what do you think? Yes. yes. All righty. Absolutely. So, um, and uh, that's not all there is to it. I'm uh, just looking at this thing from 1999. 
Sherman did a statement of policy on changes in natural gas demand. Back then, what they saw was the Northeast U.S. wanted more gas. They thought Florida needed more gas, so they wanted more pipelines. It's got this, uh, this gem on page 21. A requirement that the new project, pipeline project, must be financially viable without subsidies. That sounds like a good requirement does not eliminate the possibility that in some instances project costs should be rolled into the rates of existing customers, like 3.2 billion into the rates of FPL customers. But that ain't all. On page 15, it seems that discovered that eminent domain was causing landowners to come out of the woodwork and complain. And uh, they says landowners and communities often object both to the taking of land what a, what a thought. Some people will tell you about that. And to the reduction of their land's value. Notice I just say it right out here. You know, nowadays pipeline companies try to claim that's not true. And, of course, the environmental impact. So how are those not three more subsidies? This pipeline is massively subsidized at the expense of the rate owners, rate payers, the landowners, and all of us. All of us who drink with our straws from the Philidian Aquifer without which Florida or South Georgia, where I live, is nothing. Okay, so what are they doing to our waters? Okay, um, I was fly back in October, I was flying over the Withacoochee River in Georgia between Valdosta and Brooks County, and I looked down and, what is that yellow thing in the river? directly in a line between the two drill sites. They're not supposed to be putting anything in the river. It took weeks to get them to admit. They had blown fracking out, frack, uh, drilling mud up from the bottom of the river where they drilled a pilot hole. They had done a frack out, it's called, into the river. This is something that they told us in a court case in October 2015 in Florida, Jasper, Florida. This would not happen. The one witness for DEP said in this kind of geology, particularly for the Somani River, because they're drilling from upland to upland, there will be no adverse effects on the outstanding Florida water of the Somani River. They were either lying or wrong. And not only that, I saw a sinkhole at the drill site. They denied that to FERC. And the very next day discovered a sinkhole at the same location. Since then, there's been, somebody correct me if I got the number wrong, two at the Santa Fe River in Florida, at least two in Rhodes in Florida, where I don't know who fixed those, probably the county had to pay for it. And who knows how many otherwise. I hear there's now a frack out at the other Withacoochee River in Florida. So how do we know these things? Well, not by them telling us. We've fairly established neither Sable Trail nor the permitting agencies will tell us. So we have to go find out these violations. There's people all over Florida scurrying around like ants out of an ant bed, poked with a stick. A 600 mile long pipeline stick and merrily will tell us some of what she's found lately okay and um some people tell us i hear this all the time well you guys should have been active early on in the process when there was like hearings and it was in the legislature okay I, i'm here to tell you georgia georgia voter coalition organized getting the georgia house of representatives not your average flaming liberal organization to vote 128 to 34, no river drilling easements for you, Sable Trail. That demonstrates this is a nonpartisan issue, water and property rights. Lots of people care about those. Now, unfortunately, it turns out the Georgia legislature is not required to, to uh, validate what the Georgia Lands Commission does, so Sable Trail sued in County Superior Court and got the easements anyway. And, you know, people, you know, those hearings, I, I see some of you here who went to those hearings. You to go to those hearings? Scoping meetings and so forth? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Moultrie, Georgia, some of the things that were said later on after they got tired of just saying things that were thrown into the circular file, they, people there called it this whole process a farce, a hoax. They said it was wrong. And I recognize some of you as being in Lake City, Florida, where you heard that uh, fracking driller from the Marcellus Shale say, drilling in this fragile karst limestone like Swiss cheese is insanity. Now, you don't see any of that stuff reflected when Sable Trail Fork says, we had 50 meetings, but we know it's said. So none of that stopped it. 
you will hear there were some successes. I think Deanna will tell you about moving it off with Creature River in Florida. But the pipeline's still going through. So now in the case where we have to do other things like what we're doing here, like taking your money out of banks, like protesting, like some people have been getting arrested. Some of you are here. And there's all sorts of things we can do, and we need to keep doing them. It's not in the ground, it's not shipping gas, and maybe we can stop it. And even if that happens, which I hope it doesn't, we need to fix this corrupt FERC Federal Energy Regulatory Commission boondoggle. Stop the rubber stamp. Rain in the rogue agency. Okay, and uh, one other thing that we're doing is um, we're organizing overflights like that one where I saw the old thing in the river. We're going to be doing crowdfunding to try to cover the entire length of the pipeline. I won't be showing those personally. There'll be other river keepers helping and probably Sierra Club as well. And um, if you want to contribute to that, there's a sign-up sheet back there that says Walls and Swanee River Keeper on it. We may also be buying and flying drones locally. So lots of things you can do. But I have a question for you before I wrap up. Because this is my wrap-up. How many pipelines do we want? No. Nine. When do we want them? No. No, no. One more time. How many pipelines do we want? No. Nine. When do we want them? No. No. All right, so our next speaker is Karina Gore. She's the director of the Center for Earth Ethics from New York City. So Karina. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Karina Gore and uh, I came here from New York. Thank you so much.